Kalen King out of Penn State. Now, this is a guy, if you had talked to a lot of people here earlier on in this thing, like, you know, as the season was ending midseason, they would have said this guy would be so much further up this list. It's not even funny. He had a much better 22 than 23. And there's there's a couple of categories that you get into with people that had great second to last year. Um, either they're trying to save themselves because they're trying to make sure they're healthy for the draft. Or they got injured already and they're just not, you know, not 100%. Or teams figured him out. Kalen King goes into the teams figured him out category. So the question is, can he reinvent himself, so to speak? Because I'll tell you this, this guy embarrassed himself point blank at the Senior Bowl. And I hate to say it that way because, listen, I hope I, I hope – well, for all these kids, because listen, this is a once in a lifetime opportunity to enter the NFL to become, you know, a professional football player, which is the lifelong dream for the, all these guys at that point. But point blank, he got embarrassed at the Senior Bowl. That was like the one of the top things out there was talking about how great number one was. And I'm not going to give up that name yet, but we'll talk about that. But how bad Caitlin King was, and that's what kind of solidified in everybody's head that okay, it wasn't. You know, him taking it easy it wasn't him being injured because he came in healthy. People figured him out. Um, as far as the tape on him, five foot 11, 191 pounds, 21 years old, 22, 13 games, 30 tackles, three tackles for loss, three interceptions, one forced fumble, and one fumble recovery. 23, 12 games, 29 tackles, 100. I said 100. <laughs> one point, 20, one and a half, one and a half tackles for a loss, two passes defended there with just a 60.3 PFF grade. That's bad, guys. That's really bad. The only reason he's on this list, point blank, is because of 22. If you're going based on 23, he's undrafted, probably. That's how bad his year was. Yeah. If you watch this tape, though, and you think you can fix him, you're going to take a shot late. Later than especially you would have gotten him at the end of the year. I was about to say, especially if you get a shot, taking him like in the fourth round, then you kind of have to, you know. Yeah. You and that's where I think he's going to be. Third, fourth round is where I think I see him. Here's here, here's to give you a stat and how much different his, his 22 to 23 was. In 20, um, 23, he allowed an 82.4 passer rating. The prior year of 48.9. That's a big damn jump. Yeah. So, but again, you do see some of it. Um, he's also got a little bit of experience in the slots. Maybe somebody tries to work with them. And like we talked about with Carson, work with them while they put him in, you know, in diamond nickel packages there. Uh, he's got 21 um, snaps last year at slot. Everything else, 391 at the corner spot there. Um, as far as the pros and cons, there's pros is versatile because he can play zone or man. He's he's done either one with no problem. Uh, helps in the run. He's got a good burst. Fast in the short term as well. Um, as far as the cons, he's small with short arms. A little T-Rexy. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. Inconsistent footwork. He's got bad long speeds. I mentioned he's got good. He's fast in the short term. He can't keep up with the guys who can hold on to that kind of speed. He's good in short burst. Um and he, when he tends to grab when he gets beat, which don't get me wrong. I always tell people there are bad pass interference calls. And there are good pass interference calls. A good one is somebody's going to beat you down the field for a touchdown and you stop them. And you may have lost 15 yards, but at least you didn't give up a touchdown. I'll take that pass yeah. interference call all day long. But if you just, if your instinct is automatically to grab somebody when you get beat and not try to catch up with them, not try to fix it, not try to, you know, get, you know figure something else out. That's the issue. And that is his instinct. So that's got to get broken. Um, but the footwork has also got to be get fixed as well because I that's what's really, I think, messed him up this year. I think people figured out that if they just move in certain directions, certain ways at that point there, he doesn't have the footwork to keep up with the moves and the twitch from some of the better receivers that are able to pull off those kind of moves. And that's in college. When you go to the pros, guess what? They all can make those kind of moves. He's going to yep. have to figure that out. So. Got a juke when, when you should have jived. 
jump and jive in. Then you really got to jump and jive in. <laughs> but yeah, again, round three or four, it's going to be a matter of if somebody picks him because of what he did last year is round three. And if somebody picks him because they think they can fix him, it's going to be round four. That's, yeah. that's the truth of the matter there. Thanks for listening to Two Giant Goofballs, a New York Giants podcast. We appreciate your support. Thanks so much.